Cruise Denmark. We are in one of the happiest cities in the world. It's been ranked number two recently on the World Happiness Report and has consistently made the top 10 on the Happiness Index in the last 10 years. Aarhus is where nature meets the city, blessed with a luscious forest and some glorious seaside. But most importantly, it is the host city for the Total Energies BWF Thomas and Uber Cups. We're coming to you live from the Ceres Arena for the 31st edition of the Thomas Cup and the 28th edition of the Uber Cup. 32 teams participating in total from across the globe. This morning on Court 2, of course, we'll be featuring action from the Uber Cup. And let's go through that tournament schedule. We're into day three here, but the group stage is well underway. And we'll go on to day five, which is this coming Wednesday. Then on Thursday, it's the Uber Cup quarterfinals as the group stages continue for the Thomas Cup. On Friday, we have the Thomas Cup quarterfinals and the Uber Cup semifinals. And on Saturday, it's the big one, the Thomas Cup semifinals in the morning session. And in the evening, we'll see the Uber Cup final. And then Sunday, to wrap things up, it is the Thomas Cup final. Oh, we're going to go into the Uber Cup groups because that's the action that's coming up here on Court 2. Here's a look at Group A with reigning champions Japan, Indonesia, European Women's Team Championship runners-up Germany and France. Group B have 2018 Uber Cup finalists Thailand, India, Spain and debutants Scotland. Group C will be featured right here on Court 2 shortly comprised of 2010 winners Korea, Chinese Taipei, Tahiti and African women's teams champions Egypt. Group D have 14 times champions China, hosts Denmark, Canada and Southeast Asian giants Malaysia. We'll be coming to you with three exciting sessions here on day three of court two, starting with Uber Cup action between Chinese Taipei and Tahiti and followed by Group A matchup between Japan and Germany this afternoon. The evening session will witness an entertaining Thomas Cup clash between Denmark and Germany. First up though, it's the 2006 Uber Cup semi-finalist Chinese Taipei taking on Tahiti who are appearing in their maiden Uber Cup. These two nations also recently met at Sudaman Cup in Banta just a couple of weeks ago. So. It's a rematch of sorts. And Team Tahiti very excited to be here in what is their first Uber Cup. Uh, a small team, but they are happy to experience the greatest of tournaments. Lots of smiles and cheers in that Tahitian huddle. And they will be excited in this lineup that you see facing Chinese Taipei. The first singles will be Pai Yu Po versus Meva Gaiard. And then we'll go into the second singles, Hong Yi Ting taking on Melissa Miyu. The third single sees Yu Qian Hui against Hirochia Kure. And that is followed by Suya Ching and Hu Li Fang against Mei Bagaya and Miyu again because they did play the singles ahead, so the doubles is later. Finally, the women's doubles, the second of them, sees Chang Qian Hui and Li Chi Chen take on Heritia Cure and Chloe Segustorn. So it's exciting stuff coming up with the first women's singles getting us going between Pai Yu Po and Maeva Gaiard. This is going to be an interesting one. Pai Yu Po, 30 years old and a veteran on the tour, whereas Maeva Gaiard is just 14 and sort of experiencing her first ever Uber Cup. Here with me in the Commons Street seat this morning is Australian women's and mixed doubles player Gronya Somerville. Good morning, Gronya. What a great experience this is for Tahiti. Yes, it's an unreal opportunity for them to be here in Denmark and competing in their first Uber Cup as well as um, last week in Finland as well. So great experience for such a young team to get this, you know, feel for world-class badminton and see what the big competitions are like. Often they don't have much more opportunity uh, outside of Oceania to compete, so really exciting for them. And of course Chinese Taipei, on the other hand, have been part of this competition for some time now. They've made the tournament for five straight editions, for example, uh, and we'll address the white elephant in the room very, very shortly because right now uh, we're going to see the players walk on court from the various uh, 
Uber Cup teams and Thomas Cup teams. Uh, this is, of course, three courts in play today at the Ceres Arena, so various players coming on. For court two, as I mentioned, it's going to be Chinese Taipei and Tahiti in a very short while. Chinese Taipei's uh, Yu Po, of course, has been playing in four straight Uber Cups. So super exciting to have her back on court. It's the first time she'll be playing the women's singles first rubber though. And uh, it is really something amazing to see the contrasting ages that is going to be on display very, very shortly. Yeah, exactly. So Paiupo has been professional since she was 10 years old and being 30 years old, that's 20 years on the tour as a professional athlete. And, you know, in contrast, this is going to be Maiva's first international competition outside of Oceania. So <laughs> a vast difference in experience coming up. And there we go. It is Chinese Taipei's Pai Yu Po who is walking out onto court. As I mentioned, she's done four straight Uber Cups for Chinese Taipei. So she is very familiar with what this tournament demands out of players. And she will be looking, of course, to get Chinese Taipei off on the right foot here in this match. And, you know, win here, Grania, for Chinese Taipei means they're pretty much through to the quarterfinals. Yeah, exactly. So getting through the quarterfinals is just the main focus in the group stage. And then after that, that's when you just go one at a time. Maiva Gayad coming on, of course, for Tahiti. And uh, this is such a big match for her. She is such putting on such a strong face and, you know, being brave because just at 14, you know, I'm thinking back to when I was 14 and what I was doing. I certainly wasn't playing in the Uber Cup. <laughs> exactly, yeah, I know. Definitely a real eye-opening experience this will be and she just has to try and take it in her stride, learn as much as she can and, yeah, just enjoy the experience, really. Well, it will help that she was in the Sudiman Cup just a couple of weeks back, so that is going to be certainly helpful in terms of experience. You know, furthering Black her orange. skills and experience of the Red. biggest of tournaments. Black this queen. is the first meeting between the two players. And uh, right. Payupo and Meva Gaya, they are going to test it's each right. other for sure in the opening it's stages right. of this match, just to get a feel of each other and a feel of the court. Though they have played a match each, Chinese Taipei and Tahiti have played a tie each in this Uber Cup already. So this is their second tie. And uh, in the toss, of course, uh, they elected to receive. So we will see them play out in a short, short while. They get a two-minute warm-up on court. As uh, we see a cleaner trying to, of course, make sure that the courts are dry. But Payupo there, she's going to be 30 very, very soon. And this year, she's due to be 30, 29 at the moment. So it shouldn't take anything away from that. 173 Thank centimeters you. tall, ranked 43rd in the world at the moment. Her highest ranking was, of course, 20 when she was in her peak. That was a few years back. Born in Taipei, Chinese Taipei. And uh, she is geared up to take on the mantle of the women's singles first player. Maeva Gaya, just 14 years of age. 158 centimeters tall. Her ranking, 1,033 in the world at the moment. As uh, Gronje mentioned, she hasn't got many opportunities to be on the international circuit just yet. But I'm sure this experience will certainly help her. Highest ranking, 904 in the world. So, it is, of course, a matchup of contrasts. But we will be very interested to see what kind of fight Tahiti put up. The umpire there is Iris Metz Palu from Estonia, and our service judge is from Germany. There he is, Jörg Huppertz. And uh, he will be, of course, officiating alongside Iris Metz Palu for this match. So, what I wanted to ask was, of course, the big uh, talking point, as far as Chinese Taipei is concerned, is how will they cope without Tai Tsuying? Because she has been such a crucial part of the Chinese Taipei setup for such a long time. I mean, you're talking about way back in 2012, Uba Cup is how way back it goes for Tai Tzu Ying. So how does this team cope with her not being around? Yeah, it's definitely a disadvantage to them not having that super strong women's number one singles 
because, you know, in a lot of matches you can kind of guarantee that, that first tie on the board with her there. So, yeah, I mean, the team just needs to try and step up and you, you can't rely on any player for forever, so they just need to do their best. And it's a great opportunity for Paiu Po here to, you know, prove, that, prove her, her value to the team and really step up to that number one position. That is uh, indeed a big, big task uh, taking on or trying to, I wouldn't say fill in the shoes, but just sort of taking on the responsibilities of Tai Tzu Ying because, you know, that alone is quite an ask for any player. Maeva Gayar, on the other hand, leading her team uh, in this match, starting things off, which alone comes with a lot of uh, pressure, a lot of stress maybe, because, you know, getting the team off on the right foot is so important and she will certainly be wanting to do that. Yeah, I think she's just going to have to approach it, you know, Ladies one point at a time and just right. trying to keep fighting and just trying to work the points as best she can. So here we go. The match was about to begin. Bayad will receive and Chinese Taipei will serve. One, low. Two, low. Just finding her range there, Maeva, and having to just figure out her movement a little bit as she just gets the feel of Paiu Po. Three. For Hello. someone like Maeva as well, who hasn't had this experience of international tournaments, it's a really big adjustment getting used to these kind of stadiums. I mean, you know, in Tahiti, I think they train at, you know, something like a, a school stadium or, you know, a very small badminton court. So a big stadium like this is a little bit overwhelming, you know, all the lights overhead, the, the drift is different, the feel is different, other courts going on next to you. So a total new experience for her, I'm sure. And uh, both of these players have played in the Sudaman Cup, so they have come from Finland, uh, which will help their cause here a little bit. That adjustment that needs to be made for Maeva, it's about you know big stadiums, just getting the feel of playing in these kind of arenas. For Payuko, it's about conditions, it's about adjusting to the weather and uh, playing her best badminton in a new setting. So. Both of them will bank on that Suleiman Cup experience a little bit as they get used to the matches here. Paiupo just making an error there. Service over, 6-1. Seven, one. She tried to get there. Just got in late. And that's what she needs to do. She just needs to keep trying to go for every shuttle and really do the best she can. Eight. One. You know, for my uh, playing the likes of Payu Po and even before that, you know, Tahiti had did play Korea. And just playing this level of players who are on, you know, on the best of the game. What will she, do you think, what is the most important thing she needs to take away from this? Um, I think the most important thing is probably just, you know, learning the areas that she can improve after playing these kinds of players. So, you know, seeing how they play, how they approach the game and some of the skills that she can then implement within her own game. And one of the biggest things that, you know, young players like her take away from this is really that motivation to want to be better, to want to get to this level and really challenge these opponents in the future. So these these kind of experiences when you're young just kind of keep that fire and that flame burning to make you want to improve and, you know, do better in the next opportunity. Well, with that, we've seen Paiupo go up 11-2 at the mid-game interval. And uh, that was a quick run of points for Chinese Taipei. Mai Bagayad, of course, just trying to figure things out on court two. And uh, three minutes for that 11-2 lead for Chinese Taipei.
I mean, when the coach is talking, I mean, I would imagine when the Tunisian coach is speaking with his players in this kind of situation, uh, it's more about pointing out their areas of improvement than it is about specifically handling the opponent. Yeah, yeah. So I think it, like in this case, she's playing a lot of net and Paypo can kind of just step forward and wait for that. So it'll be just trying to make the court big, you know, trying to push her, push Paypo to the back and then come in and use the net shot that she seems a bit more confident with and just trying to, yeah, play her shots and stay in the rally as opposed to, you know, making quick errors. Maiva, of course, having played Korea in the first of uh, the matches here in the Uber Cup, in the first of the Group C matches. Uh, she played Kim Gaon, uh, which was also, I'm sure, a tough ask, but lost that one, 321, 421. So, you know, it doesn't get any easier, unfortunately, in these tournaments, but there is certainly a lot to take away from these matches. And in Payupo's position, you can see she, she just serves into the net there, and. They're, they're the kind of little mistakes that you don't want to even let creep in at, the, at this stage. You want to just try and, you know, maintain that level of focus. It doesn't have to be super high intensity as opposed to, you know, some bigger matches that might be to come. But just trying to not let it slip too low is a good habit to get into. It's a lovely shot from Payupo there. Just gliding the shuttle across the net. Payupo played Egypt in her first uh, Uber Cup match in this group C tie, beating Doha Hani quite uh, easily, 21-7, 21-10. So this has been a good, comfortable start for Chinese Taipei, for Pai Yupo. You know, just the kind of easing in you need into a tournament like Uber Cup where there's so many matches. Sure. Yeah. And a good rally there by Maiva. You can see in her reaction that she was really happy with that point and how she finished it. So she just needs to keep that fighting spirit throughout. That is an uncharacteristic mistake by Paiupo going out. And it is hard in Paiupo's position being kind of, you know, the, the more experienced and high level player to, to handle the difference in what's coming back from you from the other side. So, you know, you're getting a lot of shorter lifts or looser shots per net and sometimes that the, the bigger opportunity that's there to have a lot of choices, you can, you know, get a bit <laughs> confused yeah. with it and make some silly errors because it's a little, it's different from the kind of level that she would be used to. It's a case of too many choices. Yeah, in a way, yeah, exactly. And Payuko now two points away from securing this first game. At 19.5, just out there. She misshit that. This time, though, she gets it right, right across the court. A confident smash from Payupo. And it's game point. 26, 14 game points for Chinese Taipei. And on the first asking, Payupo converts 21-6. Chinese Taipei in the lead in this first match. Seven minutes, 21-6, Payupo giving Chinese Taipei the advantage. Been uh, contrasting fortunes in this Uber Cup, obviously, for Chinese Taipei versus Tahiti. Tahiti losing their match against Korea 5 0, whereas Chinese Taipei winning 5 0 against Egypt. And again, it's contrasting fortunes in this tie as well because Tahiti will want to win to stay alive in the Uber Cup group stages and then in the knockouts, whereas Chinese Taipei just looking to secure their place in the quarterfinals with the second win. Yeah, and I think that the other group's stage matches to come, Korea versus Chinese Taipei, will, you know, be a good, more matched up.
competition and a match that they will really need to prepare for. And then conversely, Tahiti and Egypt will also be a good match and good experience for both those countries to play against each other. You know, they, I'm sure they've never played crossed over paths from Oceania <laughs> to um, Africa. So that'll be a great experience for both countries there. It's a long way to come for Team Tahiti. Yeah, it is. I was, I was talking to you yesterday about how I couldn't see ta the Tahitian flag on the map. <laughs> and I was like, I'm from Oceania, this needs to be represented. <laughs> and then you guys are like, it's over here, it's like way over here, just in the water, this little flag. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> That's why the achievement is, you know, so amazing. It's to be here, you know, from a little country like Tahiti and to represent. It's a moment of pride yeah. for these players here. A little beautiful country like Tahiti. I've had the the opportunity to visit there, and it's stunning. We're off with the second game, and again, error coming off Payupo's racket there. To make it one all, Payupo smashing it downwards. And the more Maeva can keep the shuttle in play, the better it will be for her, just to sort of up her confidence. If these, you know, are short points where she just where she just kills it off by Yupo, then you know, it's harder to sort of deal with that. Two, one. Maeva's shots just do have that little bit of loose quality in them that Paipo is able to take advantage of, giving her a lot of time and a lot of choices with what she can play next. Oh, onto the carpet. <laughs> Wild well shot from, out. From Paipo then. I wonder what's going on in her mind when she heard that. of course uh, being part of the Chinese Taipei setup for some time as we mentioned but uh, she's always played either women single second or women single third you know Kai Tsuying having taken that women singles number one mantle how different would this be then as a first singles player for the team yeah I think with her experience it it wouldn't be too much of a huge burden for her I'm sure she's used to this kind of you know tournament match pressure and I think she'll just embrace it and, you know, obviously do her best for, for her country. But she, she's, you know, over her career, she's got some good matches under her belt, has, um, I believe, beaten, like, Sindhu in 2019 at the China Open. She's won the Russian Open in 2019 as well. So she's definitely got the, the level there to have some of the, the results that Tatsu Ying herself made achieve within this tournament as well. Nice return there. Yeah, so a great shot from Maeva. That backhand going just wide. But already you can see a little bit of difference in Maeva's game. Although, you know, she is making more errors, but just getting those points in earlier on in the game shows that she's picked up a little bit more from the first game experience. I think Maeva's just playing a little bit too much to the front court only. She's playing a lot of drop shots on the nets. It'd be nice to see her use some clear shots and some pushes to the back to make Payupo work around the, the full court a bit more. It's a 
possibly smash from Perry Paul. Just the right amount of power to make sure Chinese Taipei are in the lead in the mid-game interval, 11-3 now. In just six minutes. Well in control of this match, Paiyupo of Chinese Taipei. walk back on court. Tahiti in this tournament uh, representing Oceania, uh, Grania's area yes. and region uh, because Australia and New Zealand couldn't quite make it and uh, with all the COVID travel restrictions. Yeah, and fortunately for Tahiti, quite a few of their players reside in France as well, so they have that, you know, ease of having players already in Europe, making the travel arrangements a little bit easier. But Maiva is, in fact, one of the girls that still lives in Tahiti. Yeah, she's balancing school and playing badminton. I mean, this is, a, you know, a hard ask of 14-year-old, but she's got to, you know, do her studies and also play professional badminton at the Uber Cup. Yes. <laughs> a little bit, of, a little different situation where Pai Po has been professional since she was 10 years old. <laughs> I'm sure Paiyu Po can relate, saying that, you know, even I had to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure she, she had the same issues when she was in school. Exactly. But since then, she has a lot more in her backpack of badminton experiences. But now, Maiva is lucky to add this to hers. It's a great opportunity. It was really, you know, disappointing that Australia and New Zealand couldn't make it here. But it's great that Oceania is still represented and that Tahiti was able to take up the position. That's out. Maeva Gyayad uh, had played women's doubles in the Sudaman Cup uh, and well, as well as mixed doubles with uh, a fellow 14 year old in Elias Montblanc. So she's got an experience of playing all three disciplines, of course. Yeah, and at, at this age, it's great to still keep playing three disciplines, you know, um, improving your skills, getting more time on court, it's all a benefit. So. You know, in the next few years, she might look at specialising or figuring out which one she's better at or enjoys more. But for now, it's great to just, you know, get all this experience. And later, she's featured in the second women's doubles, I believe. Yes. No, all first first women's doubles. All three, all three women singles players will be playing in the doubles fixtures for Shahidi. It's a small team, but... They will be relishing the, you know, hours on court. Yeah, even more opportunity to. Great net roll there. Nice shot by Maiva. That's Chloe Sergostom, who will be playing in the women's doubles for Tahiti. And that is out. Oh, she's challenged it. Well, I shouldn't be saying anything. <laughs> I'll wait for Hawkeye. And it's great for these um, Tahitian players to, you know, get the experience of having Hawkeye. You know, we never experience it really in the Oceania region at our smaller tournaments. So, you know, little things like this are just something that's new to them in this big stadium that it's great she's taking advantage of. Oh, that was well out. One challenge remaining. As suspected. But good on her for challenging and thinking she had a chance there. Just great movement from Payupo, just moving her opponent around. And that leads up to match point for Chinese Taipei. 14 match points here. Ah, that was lovely. What a way to end it. A backhand play from Payupo means it's 21-6. 21-6. That was a 
Supreme performance from Payuko, uh, putting Chinese Taipei ahead in 16 minutes, 21-6, 21-6, against Tanitis Maeva Gayar. She'll be happy to get this through. A little fist bump there with her coach. Smiles all around. And although it did not go Tanitis' way, I'm sure she'll be happy to get that performance and get that match in. There you go. Look at that. That just effortless backhand from Paiyu Paul. And uh, that was game over. Match over, game over. The players walk off court. And uh, I was speaking to Maeva at the end of the Sudiman Cup. And uh, she was just really thrilled. All smiles, all the time. Coming up, it is the second women's singles between Chinese Taipei and Tahiti. Arena, which is the indoor facility here at our sports park. Right next to us is the football stadium, the third largest in Denmark, would you believe it? And uh, of course, we are here because uh, several.